Bunchy viewers and random Doctor Who fans, do me a favour. Close your eyes. Go on then. Shut them. Eyes closed? Good. Now, we're going to go a bit Darren Brown here. I want you to picture Captain Jack Harkness in your mind. Not John Barman, but the actual character Captain Jack. Do you see him? Alrighty. Now, open your eyes. I'm guessing this is pretty much the picture you had in your mind. It's the iconic, most recognisable portrayal of Captain Jack with the long coat and so on. So, why the hell did it take so long for a figure of Jack to be released in this outfit? My god! The first time Jack was released as a figure back in 2005, character thought it would be a great idea to put him in his Air Force jumpsuit. I didn't want a Captain Jack figure dressed like this. I wanted him wearing his coat and looking awesome and me. But sometimes you have to play the cards you're dealt. So let's take a look at the first Captain Jack Harkness figure. Now, I do have to admit that the face sculpt is pretty decent. It kind of does look like John Barman. It's not perfect, but it's recognisable enough that it's him. The hair looks good too with the little side parting. And the eyes, nose, mouth and ears are all detailed very nicely. Moving on to the torso, the little straps on the shoulders are present, the collar of his jumpsuit looks good too with the lighter blue shirt collar visible underneath it and this weird red and yellow dotted ascot around his neck. The jumpsuit itself has some nice detail over it as well, there are two buttons present under the collar alongside an Air Force badge and two breast pockets. There is some of that wrinkled and creased material detail in the mould, but I've seen better. There is a belt which is present around the figure's torso, which pulls in the jumpsuit at the back, creating a few more creases, but apart from that, there's nothing really spectacular on the rest of this figure. The legs are quite bland, and the shoes are just formal and black with no peg hole, and plenty of legal garb on the sole. So overall for detail, it does try in some areas, but overall, it's just dull. Taking a look at articulation, the head can perform the full 360 degree exorcist twist, the arm spins through a 360 degree movement at the shoulder and moves in and out through 90 degrees on the elbow and has another 360 on the wrist. The figure has full 360 waist articulation, the legs can kick forward to 45 degrees at the hip and can extend out to the side allowing him to do the splits. And finally there's a 90 degree bend at the knee. So for articulation it's steady but not spectacular. Now, one of the upsides to this figure is that it came with Jack's squareness gun or sonic blaster thing, which for its minute size was very well detailed but incredibly small, so with this figure up on display and falling off my shelf constantly, I lost it. Or set it on fire, whatever. I remember seeing a re-release of this figure a few years ago and instead of coming with the blaster, character had replaced his accessory with... a hat. That's right, a hat. Don't be fooled, she's just a regular Malibu Stacy with a stupid cheap hat! But she's got a new hat. <laughs> but all was not lost as a Doctor Who spin-off was on the way, with Jack as its main character, Torchwood. And a whole buzz was made that some figures were to be released of the characters from the show. I saw some of the preview pics of the series with Jack wearing his coat and thought to myself, Yes! Finally I'll get the Jack figure wearing his coat. And because Torchwood is aimed at adults, the figures will be made for collectors over kids, which means much more detail. I couldn't wait until I saw the Jack figure. Holy hell. I've already reviewed this figure, so if you want an in-depth rant about just how awful it is, click here. But this was a major disappointment. Not only did it look nothing like John Barman, it had him wearing everything except his coat. Why do that? Look at all the Torchwood merchandising, everything from books to posters, had the publicity photo of Jack wearing his coat plastered all over them. The only good thing to come out of this train wreck was at least they included the Vortex manipulator on his arm. And they tried with the clothing, but overall, this is awful. Flash forward to 2007 and Jack's return to Doctor Who in the series 3 episodes Utopia, The Sound of Drums and Last of the Time Lords. Now, this merited him a new figure, surely? I heard a flight control TARDIS set was to be released containing the Doctor, Martha and Jack. Surely they would have to redesign the figure to include him in this set? He was wearing his iconic costume throughout all three episodes and... Oh, for God's sake! It was a re-release of the series 1 figure packaged with the Doctor and Martha. Come on, he wasn't even wearing that outfit in those episodes. But finally, we got a Jack figure from those episodes. It had taken around three years, but finally I got my hands on a Captain Jack Harkness figure wearing his coat. And here it is. So, what do I make of it? Well, the face sculpt is... awful. It's terrible. Not as bad as the Torchwood figure, but at the same time looks nothing like John Barman. 
How is this possible? I thought they did a pretty decent job with the World War II jumpsuit version, so why not just use the same face sculpt again? But no, they redesigned it and it looks really bad. I don't know if it's the expression on his face, but it just looks like he's squinting and pursing his lips. It's, it's just weird. The hair sculpt is good, but the fringe should have been flicked up. Fortunately, the torso is where this figure gains a few points. First up, we finally got the overcoat that I was banging on about for this entire video, and it doesn't disappoint. Those World War II straps are present on his shoulders. The collar and lapels look great, and the coat even includes some buttons and pockets on the sides. The sculpt of the coat looks great as well, and it's moulded so it looks like it's actually hanging off the figure. Those creases and wrinkles in the material look nice, and there's even a belt hanging from the back. And it's even split at the bottom as well, just like the actual coat. A lot of attention has been paid to his chest under the collar of his blue shirt there, you can see his white t-shirt. The shirt buttons and braces are present as well, and you can see the outline of his pecs through the shirt, which has that wrinkled material effect in all the right places. Moving down to the legs, the addition of that brown holster on his belt is a nice touch, but the actual trousers themselves are just a basic grey colour, with all the basic detail that we've seen countless times before. While the shoes are painted a nice glossy brown with a darker sole. Again, there's no peg hole, but plenty of legal garb. When it comes to articulation, the head can move left to right, but can't do the exorcist twist, as I can very easily scrape the paint off his neck. The arms can do a full 360 at the shoulder, spin through 360 degrees at the bicep and tricep, bend in and out at 90 degrees on the elbow, and spin 360 degrees on the wrist. The figure can spin through 360 at the waist, the leg can kick up to 45 degrees at the hip and move outward to do the splits, but this is somewhat hindered by his coat. There's another 360 degree join at the top of the leg and a 90 degree bend at the knee. This version of Jack was released and re-released with many accessories including his revolver. But the version of Jack that I picked up came with the doctor's severed hand in a jar. Oh yes, a prop famous for appearing in both Doctor Who and Torchwood and weirdly enough was something that I wanted for a while as I thought it would look great up on display as part of my TARDIS playset. And it doesn't disappoint. It comes in that hexagonal shaped casing with the handles and that blue tinted cylinder encasing the hand makes it look as though it's suspended in water. Honestly, I think it looks great and it's one of the best accessories I've seen alongside one of the new series figures. So, overall, what do I think of these figures? Well, they all have their good points and their bad points. If I didn't want to destroy these three, I would take the head sculpt from the Series 1 figure and attach it to the body of the Series 3 figure, then swap its arm for the Torchwood version with the Vortex Manipulator. That would look cool and incorporate every iconic image from Jack himself. The long coat, the Vortex Manipulator on his wrist, and the fact that he actually looks like John Barrowman. But, if I had to pick one as my favourite... I'd go with the Series 3 version. Why? Forget the coat. It's all about the hand in the jar. Oh yeah. Anyway, that does it for this review. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there are plenty more reviews online. Thank you again for watching, and remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye.